Hello. Thank you for joining this session about the modern attack surface of cloud environments. A breach to a cloud environment obviously could have detrimental consequences. Just recently, we've heard about a data breach of a big vendor in a financial industry. The as aftermath of this data breach was the leak of personal information of 100 million Americans and 140,000 social security numbers. Indeed, Ravi, the damage was huge, and it's only one data breach example. We will go over some more real attack stories in a couple of minutes. As we all know, cloud is being adopted everywhere, and for a good reason. There are many advantages in cloud technologies. Nowadays, organizations run their most critical and sensitive workloads, business application, and databases in the cloud. However, on the other side of the equations, attackers have also noticed the cloud trend and in turn have evolved their attacking techniques. Therefore, we, will, we all need to act like our organization is under attack. And more importantly, to assume that one of our thousands of endpoints, users, or applications might have been compromised. In other words, adopt the assume breach mentality. This is a good point. An assume breach attitude is super important. And that's why making sure your environment follows the least privilege principle is so important. This is the big difference between a contain attack and a terrible data breach, or even a compromise of the whole cloud environment. When you talk about list privilege in cloud, we should talk about role-based access control, also known as RBAC. This, is, this authorization model used by cloud providers, Identity and Access Management, or IAM for short. The problem is that there are thousands of permissions that can be assigned to hundreds or even thousands of entities and applications that we have in our cloud environments. These numbers always amaze me. Did you know that there are more than 5,000 different API calls in each of the major cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and GCP? And for each of these API calls, there is the corresponding permission that can be assigned to cloud entities. Permission assignments in general is built from three main elements. These are the identities that get the permission, the actions that are being permitted, and the resource or resources that the actions are approved on. A simple mistake in one of these three elements could lead to a privileged escalation and an unintended access or control to cloud resources or assets. From previous attack stories that have been made public, we know that attackers look exactly for this kind of authorization opportunities. Any bad permission assignment makes the organization attack surface larger and creates a possibility for attackers to escalate privileges and move one step closer towards the operational goal data or disruption. Moreover, in some scenarios, a single permission could lead to a privilege escalation to full admin role in a targeted cloud environment. This is because some permissions are so sensitive that they allow the entity the ability to control other privileged entities. At CyberArk, we call these unintended admin entities shadow admins. Shadow admins are selfie admins that many organizations don't realize they have. An example for a shadow admin could be a user that two years ago needed a permission to create an AWS access key for a new service integrated with the environment. But since then, the AWS environment became a production one. And of course, no one remembered to remove this sensitive create access key permission from the original user's role. The create access key permission is equivalent to having all the 5,000 permissions available on AWS were not assigned without any conditions or restriction. That's because creating access key API allows an attacker to reset an access key of a different existing admin users and then impersonating him. Another example of shadow admin might be a DevOps user with the following permission assignment policy. At first glance, this might seem like a limited policy like ones uh, often used by DevOps user. This policy permits only four API calls related to EC2 instances. And as you can see, the entities with this attached permission policy cannot delete other EC2 instances. However, a potential attacker that compromises this DevOps user through phishing mail, for example, has not yet gained full admin right over the AWS environment. But he could use the current stolen credential of that user to create a new privileged instance profile. Instance profiles are roles that can be assigned to a machine instances. With the newly privileged instance profile, the attacker could create and attach a privileged role to one of the EC2 instances he already have access to. 
From this instance, the attacker could assume full admin role and take control over the whole AWS environment. And if they desire, they could terminate entire cloud services and assets. There are dozens of such sensitive combinations of permission assignments, which will lead to a risky privilege escalation. Let's dive into a few real attack stories that leverage these overly permissive and ris risky permissions. At the first attack story, the attacker discovered an SSRF vulnerability in one of the company's internet-facing servers. This SSRF vulnerability allowed the attacker to query the metadata service of the EC2 instance the application was running on. Using the metadata service, the attacker could pull the AWS temporary token of the role attached to the machine. Unfortunately, this role had excessive permissions. It had a list buckets permission and a sync bucket permission. By abusing these two unnecessary permissions of the compromised role, the attacker listed the F3 bucket storage in the company's AWS environment and found a specific storage with sensitive data on it. The next step the attacker took was to copy all the content using the sync command and then uploaded it to GitHub. In another case, a former employee who left the company decided that he wants to take revenge on his former employer. By mistake, the, the employer forgot to revoke the permission of that employee when he left the company. In return, the former employee used his assigned role to delete 450 virtual machines from the company's GCP environment. During this unauthorized access, more than 10,000 customers' accounts were shut down for up to two weeks, which caused the company to spend about two and a half million dollars to restore the damage to the application and refund the affected customer. Another attack that took place recently was when one company decided to ev evaluate its AWS relational database service called RDS. The goal was to upscale its customer database. The company uploaded a snapshot of its customer database to a test AWS RDS instance. Then, in an unrelated incident, the company left an internal system accessible from the internet. The internal system stored a copy of the company's AWS API key. A malicious actor found this computing instance and stole the API key. It then used this access key, which of course was assigned an overly permissive role, to access the company's cloud infrastructure, where he found the AWS RDS service the company used for testing, along with all the internal customer information. In all these attack stories, a solid permission assignment management could limit the attack and prevent the terminal of damage. And back to the assumed breach mentality, potential attackers will find some way to gain an initial foothold in the environment. It could be via unpatched applications, misconfiguration, an insider, and more. Afterwards, the attacker rely on either overly permissive roles or risky combinations of permissions to proceed with their malicious intentions. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Osef. Thank you, Lavi. And thank you.